I have my uh, palette ready with all the colors used for skin. This is my specially skin painting palette where I, um, whenever I want to paint skin, so this is the palette I first, uh, I've taken out certain colors which I usually use for skin painting. And uh, since the gown has a, a purple color to it, so it's a purple gown. It's got some uh, sheer here where I can, I can see the leg. So we'll be painting that there. And then remaining will be a purple, purplish shade gown. So quickly we'll get to it. If you guys have any questions for me, you can just uh, add it there. And uh, I'll try to answer most of your questions. And... If you guys want to see any particular materials that I'll be using. So I'll just show you the basic ones which I'm currently using. These are some of my favorite brushes. I started earlier with very simple brushes from the local brands. And these are the brushes which I recently bought. Which are very expensive actually for me. This, are, this is the silver velvet black brush. Then this is a Raphael brush. Uh... You can see the brands out here. It's a Raffel brush. And this is a Princeton Heritage brush. So currently I've been uh, using these brushes. And uh, the colors that I usually use are my... Uh, one second, yeah. The Derwent Academy colors. These are the colors that I usually uh, use. So this... Then I also have a set of um, uh, this prim prima, uh, Prima Colors from Art Philosophico which is a tropical set and we'll be using this uh, purple color today for the, uh, for the details in this purple color we are going to use. So quickly we'll start with the painting. And always, whenever I start with the illustration, the first thing I like to do is always start with the skin illustrating part because uh, because it takes some time to dry and to, to add a next layer. So always what I do is start with the skin illustrating part. So I'll be using this brush, the silver black velvet brush size 2. So I'll be using it for the skin and everything. I have some music as well here. I always love to have some music when I'm painting. So for the skin that I'll be using, as I said, this is the palette that I'll be using. This is some crimson red. This is cadmium red. And this is a plain uh, orange, permanent orange. This is medium yellow. This is cerulean blue. And this is ultra, ultra marine blue, blue. And this is some burnt sienna. Uh, no, this is a ripe sienna. And this is a flesh tint. So, as you guys know, I mean, if you are not that well aware with the fact uh, about the skin painting. So, whenever you do a skin painting, uh, always start with a fresh wash, with a fresh clean water. Otherwise, your skin will look very, you know, uh, muddy and it will not look that glowy skin. So, I have this fresh water here. It's a clean water. So, I'm going to first start with the skin out here. I'll be taking a bit, little bit of cadmium red and yellow and give a slightly deeper tone to it. And add lots of water because I want to make my skin very glowy and clean. Maybe add a little bit of sienna over here.
but as you can see I'm using a lot of water it's almost as good as water just water just giving my base layer first always keep your tissue ready as well so if you want to just absorb any excess color or water from somewhere you can just use your tissues and I'm leaving certain areas for highlight uh, so the colors that I mixed are cadmium red and I also mixed a little bit of yellow with cadmium red and a little bit of brown that is the sienna I uh, I mixed a little bit of sienna with it and the brush that I'm using is a silver velvet black brush that I'm using it's a size 2 brush So whenever we are doing a fashion illustration or any any painting we want to give the contrast and the you know uh, for a painting to look very lively contrast is like very important and uh, to give those contrast is basically playing with light and dark colors. So whenever you are playing with light and dark colors all you have to first imagine is a light source. So imagine that my light source is from here. So just let me take a pencil and show you guys quickly. I would usually imagine that my light source is here. So when your light source is like this from upcoming, all this area will be all highlighted. And the areas which are just maybe under arm, maybe below the face near the neck all that area will be all dark so there we are going to give our shadows but first I would just want to first give a slight wash Yes, you want to give the light, middle and the dark tones and the dark tones will be the in the area where there is no light or where there is a very minimal light. The middle tone will be the actual color and the light will be the area which are highlighted because of the light. And also I'm doing this wet on wet technique for the skin because I want a very smooth graduation, very smooth gradual, you know, uh, transition of colors. So just a little bit of shadows here, here, but I'm keeping my brush and my water very clean. And I have not used white anywhere. I am just keeping the white of the paper. Because in watercolors, once you put a color over it, it's very difficult to give that white glowy look again. So, just taking a little bit of more cadmium. And adding a little bit of blue to it, cerulean blue, for cooling down the color slightly.
this is how I usually paint my skin and when I paint a face imagine how makeup is done so you know your slightly it will be a darker the below the cheeks there will be a contour below the lips there will be slightly a darker because of the shadow that has come yes shadows are very important if you want to give a life to a painting so giving shadows and as soon as we just added little bit of shadows the painting started getting that life you can as you can say so as of now we'll just leave this to uh, leave this to dry slightly because you when you work with watercolors you have to work in layers because you can't just keep on adding layers on on layers all the colors will start mixing with each other so you want to just give time for this layer to dry just a second let me just smoothen it here slightly and you where the areas where you want the highlights you want the white of the paper to be remaining and if you want to just pick any color out of the paper just take a clean brush and then just with water just lift off the paint slowly and then just wipe it with a tissue so we'll just uh, leave the uh, skin here for as for now and since we have all, uh, uh, one hour to get to it uh, to complete this so we'll just quickly move on to the hair first and I'll add the details later on hair and the uh, gown so for the hair I usually like to play with different colors so what I'll do is now in this reference picture what you can see she has a like more of a dark brown blackish hair but then I would not go completely like as the reference picture I would slightly change with uh, some uh, adding some various colors to the hair maybe a little bit of blue and little bit of you know reddish tinge kind of to the hair so using the same brush I'm just adding that this is too dark just going to because when you when the when you play with hair it has you know various tints to it when it's in sunlight or you know when it's in shadow it's got various tints to it so you can just play around and also play around with those areas surrounding it because it's not going to be a perfect same illustri uh, it's not the portrait or it's not a uh, realistic painting it is more of a fashion illustration so you can just play around with the hair if you like little bit Earlier I used to not much, uh, I used to go for more of just adding browns to the hair but now I do add various colors to the hair and give that look over there. So now uh, we need to let the first layer dry. So we let this layer dry so that we can add the details. As I said with watercolors you have to keep on working in layers. You cannot just uh, keep on adding paint because this layer has to dry then we can just go on the next layer. 
So meanwhile, what we can do is we can work a little bit for the eyes and the lips. And this is a little bit tricky because it takes a lot of concentration while working for eyes and the lips and the facial features on such small palette. I mean, on, on such small illustration, such small face. So uh, let me just get my colors where I mix a little bit of brown, dark brown, that is a raw umber and a little bit of black to it because I don't give a completely black eye or something like that unless the makeup is that way. So just and it has to be a very very less water and more of the paint. So I hope you guys can see this. Taking a very small sharp brush, this is a, a silver velvet number 2 brush which has got a very sharp point. So I'll be just using this brush. So if you guys want me to zoom the camera, just a sec, okay? Uh, let me just try to zoom the camera. I hope I hope this yeah so I can just zoom this much and then we can just work on the face I hope this is clear now if or should I just try to zoom it more? But then, yeah. So I'm just taking a little bit of very slowly because I don't want to make any mistakes with the face. As for me, as I said, the facial features give a life to the painting so I try to make them as uh, clear as possible for the eyebrows I'll be just giving small strokes like this because eyebrows are never completely uh, flat and sticky so you have some hair random hair here and there so this is how I, and the camera of my phone guys is not that clear so uh, you'll have to bear with the clarity because I've zoomed it a little bit but this is usually how I do my uh, facial illust uh, facial work facial features as I can say a little bit of move black for the eyeballs to add the definition And then I'll just give a little bit of pinkish hue for the lips. Again for the lips now you can you can you can give completely detail as you want or you can just give a very minute work because now because since the image here is so small the face here is so small you cannot work very detailed that is why I just try to give that 
लिप्स इफेक्ट जस्ट स्लाइटली मॉडिफाई दिस इफ यू ट्राई टू वर्क मोर एंड मोर देर इज अ हाई चांस दैट यू विल स्पॉइल द फेशियल फीचर्स बिट ऑफ डार्क बिटवीन डार्क शेड बिटवीन द लिप्स as i said to give any painting a life the shadows are very necessary so that is what we are doing here we are just adding some shadows and giving those things now as you can see so uh, the face is almost uh, done maybe a little detailing here and there which i might add later on so as of now for me this is almost done uh i am using the derwent academy colors i did show all your uh i was gifted those colors by my you know by my friend and i like like them so i'm using uh, derwent academy colors they are easily available on amazon it's a pack of fine liner sometimes but not usually i usually use very small brushes to give that look with watercolors uh fine liners it's only when i'm doing a certain style of painting i use them so i guess this is it I won't work much on the face now because uh, it will just spoil the facial features. So yeah, I'm using a Derwent Academy colors, guys. Derwent Academy, Derwent Academy colors. Yes. So now let me just zoom out now because we are going to paint the dress now. So just let me zoom out the camera. Yes. So, uh, let's start quickly with the dress because if we keep on adding details, we might miss the chance to actually paint a dress. So, as uh, shown here, this is a bit of purplish. So, I'll be adding the purple color to it. and we'll give a wash first i'm taking a bigger brush slightly now to give a slight wash and then add the purple color now i'll be using a combination of derwent academy and this primer color purple because i like the pigment these colors are highly pigmented so you 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 can use very less of the color so let's just start with it take water first just give a slight wash of water only where i want to paint i'll be adding the water there that's it I'm just giving a wash of water first. Usually, if my water is too pigmented, I change my water and go to a clear water. But since we have a little bit of less time here, so 
I didn't change the water and we are just quickly going to go into it. Now as the paper is still wet, again to give the basic color I will be doing a wet on wet technique as I said. So you guys can see this. So this is all a wet on wet technique. I'm just adding the base layer first. Very light wash of purple. Just trying to give some highlights. I mean trying to give some shadows. And just add a bit of more darker towards the area where the gown is just going to fall on the ground you have folds over here so that is why it's going to be a bit darker out here also here where there is a inner side of the gown this one it's going to be quite a dark part this year here because the both the uh, you can say the gown is just coming around the leg like this so this inner side of the gown is going to be a bit darker I'm switching to another brush which is slightly smaller and uh, adding a bit of blue that is a indigo blue as you can say to the purple because guys I don't do a realistic very realistic painting so you can just play around a little bit of with the colors here and there so as you can see here I'm adding a little bit of more bluish purple since it's all going towards the inside of the it's a inner part of the gown so it's going to be a bit darker and similarly we'll start a little bit now since this part is drying a bit I'll start adding a little bit of shadows to this area and your will be having slight you have a waist here Meanwhile, this layer dries a little bit. Let's work on the hair again. So, since uh, watercolors they take to dry, so what I do is I keep on working in between. Between, I'll be working on the face, then I'll be working on the dress till the facial part dries, and then I'll be working on the hair. I just keep on shifting between because. I can't wait for uh, you know this to dry completely it takes a lot of time so I'll be working on the hair now slightly 
so i'm not going to do a very detailed hair but because i want these colors to be shown when i do the hair so if i do a very detailed hair these colors will not be seen near the neck it will be darker slightly it goes for a darker brownish black near the hair near the neck sorry your it will be the your part will be also a bit meanwhile guys if you have any questions or if you want to know anything about my work or you know uh which anything else any questions for me you guys can ask so that i can just concentrate little bit on painting your and answer your questions accordingly because when you're doing on such a small uh, you know face and hair area you need a little bit of concentration to work over it and since it's with hand you cannot undo it as well <laughs> so yes your will be slightly darker part and uh, i'm working in very small strokes for the hair and leaving the areas where i don't want the color to be there so i'm just leaving those areas as highlights adding a little bit of blue for the darker part Do you have any questions for me guys or you just want to watch this painting is any of any one of you painting along with me has anyone seen the sketch and is painting along with me we had posted it on the mumbai fashion week account as well and also on my account i had posted about what i'll be painting so i know it's a sunday and it's a you know relaxing day but then i thought let's paint on paint and relax you know so is anyone So I'm just going to leave little bit of your color will be your and just dry this up because I really want to remove a little bit of color from this side. Oh, that's good. Uh, I don't know. I do, I don't think I can pronounce your name. Could you just let me know? Uh, it's can you just spell it? i mean is your name uh who's doing with me who's painting with me
and I don't want to pronounce it wrong. So, <laughs> yeah. So meanwhile, uh, now this layer of uh, the dress is dried, and we'll wait for the hair layer to dry. Meanwhile, in that, we'll just get on to the dress quickly. I'll start adding the shadows slightly and give a second wash as well. This is me giving a oh Paris. Okay, that's great to see that you are joining with me, painting with me. I would love to see what you create once the uh, this workshop is over. Would love to see your painting as well. So as of now, I'm just giving a second layers, keeping in mind the highlights and the shadows. As you can see, this part is going to be slightly more. Highlighted. This year will be a little bit of more darker. Very lightly to smoothen it up, I'll use very lightly. I'll give a pressure on the brush. I won't scrub the brush much. And then slightly take water and smoothen it out wherever I want to smoothen it out. Again this area. Yes, I'll be saving the IGTV. So don't worry guys. It will be all saved. If you can't join me now. You can watch whenever you guys are free, have a time to easily watch this. So this is going to take a time again to dry a little bit. Uh, working with watercolors is always a little bit time consuming because you want to keep on working with layers. So meanwhile let's just work on the top so that I can show you guys how uh, I do the detailing here and uh, you guys can also work if you want accordingly. And uh, we'll have at least seen everything, a part of everything that we painted here. So coming on to this I'll be as just adding the shadows slightly first details with very small brush and uh, since the light is from you this part will be completely in shadow and there's a belt over here so we'll be adding the details here accordingly and below the bust area since it's a bust your top so yeah here there'll be a contact shadow of the hand And a little bit of outline shadow here. Out here. 
and uh, maybe a layer more over here. Now if you see there are lines, there are Now I'm using very little bit of water and more of the paint because I want to start giving in the details now. So in, while doing detailing, it is more of adding more of paint rather than water. And I'm a bit sorry guys for the if the light is not that much because it's started raining out here and there's no natural light so whatever is seen is in artificial light so it's quite dark outside. Until this dries, let's work a little bit on this shadow here. Here below this flap, I'm just being very quick because of the time constraint that we have. Usually, such a gown takes at least two, three hours to I mean, at least three hours to paint with watercolor specifically. And the things will not be that perfect. Because I'm just putting on color even if the surface is a little bit wet. So now uh, you can see the embroidery over this. There is a slightly a darker sequence embroidery. Then there is a lighter sequence embroidery. And there is a little bit of actual white sequences that are there. So you can see all those, uh, that embroidery out here. So we'll try to give that look. Taking a very dark purple. As I can show you here. That what I've done here is this embroidery which is done very dark and then this here is done with a little bit of medium purple and then here it is done with the white uh, gel pen white pen so let's paint here just giving random embroidery or uh, look first
to have here. Little bit of embroidery look here. It's all dark sequence out here. Then we'll take a slightly light purplish. Continue with this light purple embroidery. Where the where these uh, where the gown overlaps here on the inner layer of the gown fabric, there you'll be having some shadows. Again, you'll be having some purples here. Also here on this area, since it is going to be a slightly uh, sheer effect, I'll just erase the pencil marks slightly and first we want to darken up that area so that the leg is visible even after the sheer cloth is added over it. So I'm just adding Slightly darker skin tone. Here. And we we'll having a little bit of red. So whenever I use skin tone, whenever I paint skin tone, since I don't use one particular color, it's always a mixture of certain colors as I showed in the start. It's a mixture of usually red and yellow and a little bit of blue to it to keep that as a skin always under light, it has different shades. It's Although the base tone will be one particular color. But it will never be just one, you know, uh, single uh, shade. Here there will be a more of shadow because of the dress overlapping out here. So this is done. Meanwhile this upper layer is dried. Let's work on that layer. And 
and uh, your near the area where the hand meets there will be a little bit more darker shade because of the contact shadow that comes out there I'm sorry for the yeah sometimes it happens the brush slips out of your hand now since this upper layer is dried I'll give a bit of for the uh, sequence part as I told you guys this is all given with this gel pen that is this sakura gel pen that I have in three different sizes so this is done with this gel pen out here so we'll just I'll zoom in the camera if you guys want to just see very closely so let's just zoom in the camera And uh, so any questions guys, if you want to know anything. This is how I'm doing the sequencing white embroidery part with the white gel pen. You can also use a bit of silver in between. The silver pen as well, the silver gel pen also can be used to give that slight uh, effect, embroidery effect. So this is how first the gown will be done. Again coming down, I hope this is dried slightly. And I'm not sure how much time we have. So maybe the live will be stopped by itself. Do you guys want me to continue painting? I can just continue for, I can just start a different live and continue it for some time. Does anyone want to watch this more or maybe I'll be posting the complete uh, finished gown when I'm, once I'm done with it so basically this is how the technique I'll be using so if you guys want, want to watch me continue just let me know so I can just start a different life or if you guys have any questions for me, you can just ask me that as well now. So are you guys there with me or is it too boring to watch? Because yes, it's going to take time. It's going to be a little bit time consuming. There are a lot of details in the gown, 
I wanted to show an Indian designer gown itself because many of them have requested to show detailing and everything. Hence, this is what we took into consideration about showing a detail. Yeah, hey guys, so I just, um, I've saved the earlier video and we'll just continue painting this slightly again. details accordingly so I wanted to also show you guys how the detailing of the skin is finally done I have to just um, should I continue on the hair first let's continue on the hair first Anything about you guys? Any questions for me? This is how the technique is going to continue. This is how layer by layer I will be adding details. With watercolors you have to be very uh, patient and very uh, very you have to be very patient with it because if you keep on adding layers Continuously, what will happen is that you will never get those smooth finishes and the glowy look that comes with that. Uh, how long do I spend on one illustration? It usually depends. Detailed illustrations take like around 3 to 4 hours. Sometimes I've even spent around 6 to 7 hours on one illustration. So it was all how, many, how much it takes into the details. And uh, so I don't, I don't usually work that continuously because I cannot sit for 6 to 7 hours continuously. But yes, I do work in layers then. And sometimes if it's a very simple illustration, then it's going to take like... Uh, maybe uh, around uh, you know one hour or something like that if it is not a detailed illustration but if it's a detailed one then it takes quite a lot of time And uh, 
So just uh, give a little bit detailing and some messy hair here and there. Because hair is never, you know, unless it is very gelled up, it is not very, uh, what you can say, it's not very uh, in one place. Hair is never in one place. Working on the skin here. Giving slight since our skin has a bit of red is always seen because of the blood that the shadow of the blood that is seen through the skin. How did I make time for practice and doing this and all? Uh, yeah, I, obviously, I, even I struggle a lot. It is sometimes it's very overwhelming. There are days when I don't want to do anything. And especially when I have had a hectic day with my uh, dental practice I just come and just don't do anything in fact uh, I'll be just watching TV or you know like that so there are days like this but then uh, because I started this and then I started liking it I obviously try to uh, try to take out as much time maybe on the weekends or you know on uh, days when I don't have uh, my patients those days and I, I've tried to give since I, I'm into dentistry and most of the times it's not that emergency situation so I try to give my appointments accordingly I give my appointments based on on certain days when I have to work or certain days when I don't have to work currently due to the lockdown I mean due to the quarantine period and due to the slow working pattern getting a lot of time to do all this so it is overwhelming it is not uh, there are days there are we, uh, days where I'll not post on Instagram for a week together so yes just adding it's all the matter of adding uh, light and like adding the dark uh, not darker colors you can say adding more paint and adding less paint with watercolors it's more of adding more paint and adding less of paint the earlier live is saved guys you can uh, have a look there if you missed the first part and since now I'm adding a little bit of details, I'll save this as well. 
it is same on um, Mumbai um, Fashion Weeks Instagram IGTV live it is saved there And using these different colors, what it gives slightly a uh, glowy look to the skin, and doesn't make it look too muddy or you know too uh, you can say uh, a little bit of rough. It doesn't give that kind of look. just have to work in layers so yeah this is done let's work a little bit on the eyes and just let's give some glow uh, blush to the cheeks As you can see, this is the area where I've completely kept a light look because I because the light that is coming through that area. So I will not be giving but your below the uh, below the under part of the arm. Here we'll give more of a darker look. Okay. Also guys my phone battery is going to be out soon now because it's almost like more than an hour that we are doing this live. So let's walk quickly on the details out here. Where's the best place to start practice, practice scratch sketches? Just watch some YouTube videos. There are a lot of YouTube videos on how to paint hair, how to paint skin, how to paint gowns and fashion illustration. And, and it's free. You can just uh, watch hundreds of videos over there. Uh, and if you, after that, when you've watched those videos and if after that you want to learn more in detail, then you can just uh, join some courses online. There are various courses available on skin sh uh, Skillshare. Then, you know, like that. Earlier, I always watched, till now, I watch a lot of YouTube videos on how to paint uh, gowns. There are videos by many fashion illustrators over there. So now, we also have some uh, hair part, uh, some feathers going around here. So we'll try to make those feathers there and again I'll be taking a very small brush diluting a lot of water because it is slightly lighter paint and giving those feathers 
look around and then a little bit of a thicker paint So this is how I would do a illustration. So I guess guys uh, we should just wrap up here because my phone's uh, battery is also going very down. I'll be continuing this uh, work and I'll be, uh, I'll post the final detailed illustration on my page that is neha.illustradentist. I'll post it there and I'll save this video over here on uh, IGTV of the Mumbai Fashion Week. I hope you guys had a lovely time and uh, enjoyed watching watercolor fashion illustration uh, so take care guys and have a great sunday uh, bye